How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're going to be rebuilding the New York Mets, a team who made a lot of moves this offseason and look set for the future and also this season. So if you guys are looking forward to this Mets rebuild, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And as always in the comment section, let me know which team you want to see rebuild next. I'm using a new um, roster. The title is osfm 90 man accurate it's not the osfm roster i'm waiting for um but it's it's a decent roster um it's pretty up to date it doesn't have the pilar trade but it's pretty solid so osfm 90 man accurate it's by cell underscore shades cell uh c-e-l underscore shades so there's that let's get into this rebuild with the mets who i'm actually kind of excited i don't think we're going to be uh needing to make a lot of moves i think it's just going to be very small moves um that make this team really good so let's get this started um i'm gonna move the roster around because when i looked at the roster it was a little bit jumbled up and i want things to be ready for it when i show you so let me sh let me mix it around a little bit and we'll be good to go Alrighty, so basically it just had some players that were in tr like the minors that should have been in the the majors and that's what i wanted to do i know you're gonna see the little 20 that's like right right up let me it's like right here 28 out of 25 is a little bit you know it's not supposed to be like that but we'll make some trades to make it a little bit better so looking at the team as a whole um degrom Syndergaard, and wheeler those three are most likely staying um, I'm comfortable with those three starting pitchers. But that's going to be my one, two, three. It's the four and five. I'm questioning Mats and Vargas. We'll see how Mats does. Vargas is most likely going to be traded just because he's 36 and there's no reason I'm keeping him anymore. I'd rather get someone younger who will more, that will most definitely be higher than 74. There's a couple B potential starting pitchers that look decent, but most likely won't feature in this rebuild. Um, Jury's Familia, 89 overall. Seth Lugo, if he pinches, if he pitches well, he'll stick around. Familia's good; he'll be our setup man. And then the rest are kind of question marks. Um, if some do well, we'll keep them, but most likely we'll have to fill the the rest of the bullpen um, with some trades. And then Edwin Diaz is not going anywhere; he's our closer. That's good. Wilson Ramos for the next two seasons is going to be our catcher. We may have to find a backup, just to, or like a, a new catcher. Or even a better, you know, a better catcher if someone if he just doesn't perform well. But for now, he should be fine, and we should be good on catcher. Mezzarocco in real life, I'm pretty sure, is like being forced to retire base because of injuries, um, and the Mets just don't want him on the roster anymore. Travis Darno is okay for now as a backup, but like I said, we may need to find a backup or a new catcher just in case none of these catchers work out. Thomas Nadeau could be that guy. He could develop very quickly. It really just depends on how much his hitting stats increase. If they don't increase. We probably won't see him feature pete alonzo first baseman that's locked up don't have to worry about it he looks really good cano and lowry don't get me wrong cano's doing really good in real life if lowry can stay healthy i definitely think he'll help the mets in real life but these two have very big contracts and that their mid 30s will start to decrease very very soon and very very rapidly so i would rather have jeff mcneil be that second baseman or even the third baseman for this team and find somebody else that's cheaper, younger, and will develop basically to this same rating, you know, and, and that'll help the team. And because they're not, because they're cheaper, we have more salary cap to give to other players, um, which will help us out. So one of these two will probably be traded this season and then the other one will be traded next season. Todd Frazier, don't get me wrong. I know you're a great guy in real life. You're most likely leaving the Mets. Denny Echevarria, probably going to be that backup shortstop second baseman um Ahmed Rosario I want in the majors so now we're four players over the limit but Ahmed Rosario he's got a potential he looks good I'd rather have him be the shortstop Yohannes Espedes is kind of in that same group as Lowry and um Cano good player um if he could stay healthy and then massive contract so maybe stay for a season next season we'll trade him um if he does well Juan Lagares you know, I, I'm not sure. He might be our backup outfielder. We also do have Cespedes. Um, Keon Broxton, I'd rather have start because I want him to hopefully hit that high 70s this season and then next season be in the, you know, the low 80s. Raja Davis, I don't really care for. I'll probably end up trading him for like a prospect or something. Conforto and Nimmo, I kind of want these two guys to be our right and left fielders. Um, and then Gomez, again, probably a player I'll trade for a prospect. Um, or put in a package deal for a bullpen arm. 
Um, and that's why I'm kind of hesitant with Cespedes because I'd rather have these two younger players play the corner spots and develop into players, especially since they have good potential and they're still young. So that's the team. I probably talked about it a little bit too long, but that's what I'm kind of giving you guys as a picture. With the team currently, I see us as a wild card or top of the East um, like spot. That's where I see us. I see us making the playoffs currently. With the moves, I 100% see us hitting the playoffs. If we don't, that's a huge disappointment and a fail on my part. So let's get into some moves and see how we can you know, turn this team around. Alrighty, so I did say I wanted to throw Davis and Gomez most likely in a package deal for a bullpen arm. We're going to the Mariners, Mariners for Sam Tui Valala. Um, he's kind of, you know, if he does well, great. If not, oh well. Alrighty, so we're going to the Reds for Nick Senzel. Um, like I said, I would rather have uh, Jeff McNeil play over Matt, uh, Jed Lowry or uh, Todd Frazier. So Dominic Smith is kind of the big part of this trade. We're also trading, like I said, Jed Lowry and also Luis Carpio, who doesn't look like he's going to be good for Nick Senzel. Like I said, there's kind of like a future prospect, second baseman or third baseman. I know in real life he's playing center field, but um, for now, I think he's going to fill that gap once Todd Frazier leaves. Todd Frazier, Dilson Herrera, and also Sean Burnett are making way for Diego Castillo. Again, I'm trying to strengthen up this bullpen. And um, with the addition of him, who in real life, he's looking like a beast. But also in this one, he looks like he's got some good stats. And I definitely see him increasing in rating pretty quickly. We're going to the White Sox for Alex Colom, another bullpen arm. Um, I did include Jason Vargas, Luis Avalon, and then also Travis Darno in that deal. All right, the second base prospect, not prospect, but Blake Tiberi, um, JD Davis, who has a good amount of value, but I don't think is going to feature in this rebuild, as well as Paul Sewald um, is going to be traded for Darwinson Hernandez of the Red Sox, 22-year-old, um, 75 overall. We'll probably bring him up to the majors now. Um, we needed the, another starting pitcher. Kind of worked out. Our bullpen's a little bit crowded now. I think we're done with moves. Let's get into the lineup and rotation. Alrighty, this is how the team is going to be lining up basically for the whole season. You got Nimmo, Cano, Conforto, Alonzo, Ramos, McNeil, Broxton, and oh my gosh, I just stumbled, and Rosario. Um, I'll probably move the lineup around a little bit, but this is basically the starting lineup going forward. On the bench, you have Senzel, uh, Ligaris, Cespedes, Echeverria, and Mazzarocco. I might send Senzel down for at least another season. I'll see what his rating is if I do send him down, if it drops or not. And this is our starting rotation. DeGrom, Syndergaard, Wheeler, Mats, and Darwinson. And then in the bullpen, Lugo, Tuivalala, Castillo, Wilson, Colom, Familia, and Edwin Diaz. I looked for another lefty. I just couldn't find one for the bullpen. But that's the team. Already draft day. Let's get into it. Already Ethan Levy was a player I was looking at as well as... I think it was... This one, Chad Keys was another one I was looking at the shortstop. Steven Lee looks pretty good um, as a closer. Um, Brian Ramirez looks solid as well as a closer. And then the other player I was looking at was Enrique Delgado. Um, as a Oh, wait. No, he doesn't look as good as I thought. Was it somebody else I was looking at? I think it was somebody else. Uh, no, maybe not. So then we're gonna go with Brian Ramirez instead. Yeah, I must have been, I must have like spaced out for a second. Um, but yeah, we'll go Brian Ramirez. Steven Lee's still available. I know we just picked another closing pitcher, but he looks really good. We can't pass up on him. Joe Angelis. Um, I know we don't need the first baseman, but uh, you know we might, we might need a first, like a backup first baseman for the future. So we're gonna go Mark Perkis in here. Uh, good defensive second baseman. We're going to take a shot on Napoleon Reyes, the starting pitcher. Um, I know he's not going to be an 80-80 starting pitcher. And our last pick, I'm just basically going to go in blindly and see what we got here. Um, he looks bad. I mean, hitting-wise, he looks like he could be good for the future. So, yeah, we'll go with Curtis M. Or Kurt Ims. Our first pick, Brian Ramirez, is 75 overall, and he has 90 potential. So, that's a that's a solid pick right there. Our second one was Stephen Lee, 71 overall with 92 potential. So two good closers. The issue is we do have um, Edwin Diaz, but they also could just be bullpen arms for us. So it could be pretty solid. Um, the rest of the picks are pretty bad. Um, 
let's see joe angelus is 68 overall with um with 75 potential so i guess not a bad like platoon player for the future mark parkinson's only going to be a 69 overall um potential so eh. napoleon reyes is 70 overall that's basically you know he's 69 overall but you know 70 potential basically look it's bad and kurt ims is 74 potential so eh you know not too bad um, let me see if I can find those players that I was uh, talking about in the first round. Alrighty, Chad Keys was one of them. He has, uh, he's 69 overall with 94 potential. And I'm trying to remember the other ones. So let me see if I can go find them. I think it was Ethan Levy who was a closing pitcher. He's 74 overall with 91 potential. So I think that was it. Um, I looked at the rest of the picks. There's a couple good ones. Um, but overall, uh, I think we did pretty good with our first two picks. Really quick at the deadline, we are in third and we're three games out in the East. Um, and we're also three games out in the wild card. So 58 and 49, we're the seventh ranked team in the majors, um, seventh in contact, first in pitching, 23rd in speed and defense, and then 16th in power. Um, really quickly, I'll show you guys the pitching. You guys can see DeGrom there with his stats. Good ERA, um, Syndergaard, you know, a little rough season in terms of wins and losses but era is not bad neither is wheelers um matt's is having a little bit of a rough season and darwin's in is darwin's in is as well lugo is doing pretty solid in that relief role tui valala is getting rocked so he's going down in rating which is not good castillo is doing pretty solid justin wilson's looking like he's having a pretty rough season as well uh colombe's doing okay you know a three era for a reliever is not bad at all jury's familia might be moved to the bullpen um and then edwin diaz is having a little bit of a rough time too so it's looking like the back half of our rotation is doing or not rotation but our bullpen's kind of rough um looking at the rest of this team um cano Ooh. wow all right we may need to find somebody else um same with saspedes we might need to get some of those players off our books um so that we can uh afford better players um <laughs> next season jesus um because whoo he's dropped 10 overall that's unreal all right let's see what we can do because we definitely need some help Alrighty, so cano's getting traded to the dodgers for yazel sierra and also rich hill rich hill's only in this deal like you can see he's doing really badly he's only in this deal to make the the trade because of contracts Alrighty, i said i was looking for a lefty reliever and we found him uh, mark vientos and Braxton Lee is kind of a player I didn't really want to get rid of, but um, Yoannis Espedes for Josh Hader, who was traded to the Mariners. Um, the way we're going to make this work is Edwin Encarnacion is going to join us for a season, um, for the rest of the season. That's it for the deadline. Um, nothing really should have changed much besides, yeah, Edwin's going to be our DH. And then Hader now should fill that spot and then we'll probably send um gesselman giselman however it's pronounced um uh, down to the the minors or may just keep the bullpen kind of kind of full for now and just leave it like that i might just leave it like that let's see how the rest of the season goes and i'll catch you guys at the end we finished the season 88 and 74 10 games out in the east and a half game out in the wild card this one hurts a lot we are the third ranked team in major league baseball 10th in contact 12th power first in pitching 22nd defense and 14th in speed league leaders jeff mcneil had the best average and conforto had the best slugging percentage along with Degrom, with strikeouts and innings pitched as well as whip awards let's see mcneil won a silver slugger and the rookie of the year went to pete alonzo as a team you guys can see the team here um DeGrom is an ace. He's, he is very solid. Syndergaard didn't have the best of seasons, so hopefully he can bounce back next year. I mean, a 3.58 isn't bad, but I would expect better from him. Zach Wheeler, 3.49. I was kind of hoping for a little bit better of a season, but, you know, he's our three starter. I'm hoping for improvement. Zach Matz is almost an 80, a 4.22. I wish it was a little bit lower. And Darwin's in. I need. I probably shouldn't have pitched him this season. I really should have let him develop for another season. I rushed him. Seth Lugo had a pretty solid season as our long reliever, so that's fine with me. Sierra did really well in his time with us, along with uh, Giselman. So he did pretty well in his eight innings. Castillo's getting up there, you know, like 83. He's slowly developing. Justin Wilson isn't a player I'm looking to keep. 
Same with uh, Juris Familia. Had a rough season. I need I need better from Familia. Cologne did better once we moved him out of the setup spot. Josh Hader is obviously going to be our setup guy, even though he had a really rough season. And Edwin Diaz seemed to kind of pick it up towards the end of the year. Pitching-wise, I was a little disappointed in our bullpen. Um, Nimmo's up to a 78. Uh, he had a better year than the year before. Echeverria, I'm not really worried about because I don't plan on keeping him. Conforto's going up. He had a 303 average, almost 40 homers. I want to see that consistently. Edwin Encarnacion's not a player I'm keeping. Pete Alonso's up to a 74. He hit 240 on the year with 21 homers and 76 ribbies. I hope his average can continue to increase along with his rating. Jeff McNeil um, is a 79 overall. He hit 333, so that's good. I wanted to see him continue. Um, Wilson Ramos, 275, not too bad. Keon Broxton, like I said, is up, to, you know, I want him to be towards that 80 mark. Hitting wise, not that great, but, you know, as long as he continues to develop, we should be fine in center field. Ahmed Rosario is a 78. He just doesn't hit the ball well, and these two I'm not too worried about. Quickly looking at our prospects, no one pitching wise, really. Um, so I'm just going to skip over him. Thomas Nadeau is probably going to be our backup come season three. Uh, Cortez Guillorme. Um, Senzel's a 74. I'm hoping he's ready for the big leagues next season. Jimenez is looking decent. Um, Hernandez is looking pretty good as well. And then outside of that, we don't really have anybody else. I'm hoping come next season, we are a playoff team. We'll see who wins the play, uh, the world series. The Phillies defeat the Red Sox. You guys can see the playoff bracket there. It just wasn't our year. And we missed it by half a game, which is really unfortunate. I wanted to do a little bit better. So let's get into this offseason. I'll catch you guys next season. Alrighty, everybody here has arbitration minus Tui Valala. Contracts wise, yeah, everybody's going to get one. Um, yeah, everybody should get one. And we should be good going forward. To start season two, I'll quickly kind of go over um, our acquisitions that we made. Uh, free agency. Ahmed Rosario wasn't signing a contract with us, which was kind of aggravating. So he went to free agency and I signed him for a two year, $9 million deal. And then Brandon Finnegan was a player that we signed. Um, I'll show you here. Uh, well, is in free agency, two year deal. He's 71 overall. It's not a bad little pickup. There was one more who's a first baseman. Was he a first baseman? No, there wasn't. There was somebody else. Let me see if I can find him. It was this one, Samuel Borders. He was a shortstop, um, D potential. He may not turn into a star or anything, but like I said, if he's 70 overall, I'll pick him up, see what happens. So this is the team starting the season. You guys can see DeGrom, Syndergaard, Wheeler, Darwinson, Mats, uh, Finnegan kind of helps out with the small lack of starting prospects now. Um, you guys can see the bullpen there. There's a couple names down here that are okay. Um, and then the closing is where we're really strong. These two guys should 100% feature in season three. They're going to be really good. Um, and that way we don't have to rely too much on the bullpen. Thomas Nadeau is just not ready yet. So we're going to rock with Ramos and Mezzarocco. At first base, we have Pete Alonso. Um, he's looking like he's starting to finally get towards that 80 mark. Second base, we have McNeil and we signed Wilmer Flores. Yeah, we brought him back. Why not? He you know, he's got good hitting stats versus lefties. I mean, actually, just overall, he's got good hitting stats. Um, Perkinson was a guy we drafted. And then we have Guillaume and Cortez as well. At third base, we have Senzel. Um, he's going to be more of a backup. Um, uh, actually, no, he's going to be starting third base because Xander Bogars has come in to play shortstop. Ahmed Rosario doesn't hit the ball well, unfortunately. And I don't really want to stunt his growth, but... I feel like we have players now like Xander Bogars. I could move him to the third and let Senzel sit for like one more season. But Senzel um, has better hitting stats than Ahmed Rosario. So I feel like our offense kind of hurt us last season. Keon Broxton is going to start in center. Juan Lagares was brought back um, as well. And then Conforto and Nimmo are going to play right and left. So like I said, um, Ahmed Rosario is kind of on the edge. It's just, do I play Rosario? Do I play Senzel? We'll, we'll do that. We'll, I'll give Rosario one more season. If it doesn't work out, then uh, obviously Senzel is going to take over. But we'll, we'll, we'll try it one season, see how it goes. Um, offensively, we don't really have a lot of power, which is somewhat an issue. Um, I'm hoping our pitching can kind of keep us like 
you know, in a good spot. Justin Wilson's an arm I'm not really comfortable with. Um, I want to see if I can find a different lefty. So if I can do that, that'd be great. If not, we'll just, you know, probably see the end of season two. I think we've traded for Amir Garrett before, but he's going to be the lefty that I acquire. Um, he's basically the same rating as Justin Wilson. Justin Wilson is going to continue to decrease. Um, Robert Gesselman, Giselman, I've, I've always messed up his name. And Quinn Brody is a player that we're going to, the three players we're trading. So Amir Garrett should fit in that spot there. We have Hayter, Familia, Edwin. Like we have one of the best starting like pitch. We have the best starting pitching bullpen in the majors it all depends on this right here so hopefully this goes well so as you guys can see i just simmed straight through season two i had a really good feeling about it and you guys can tell 106 and 56 that's nuts so we're taking on the winner of the wild card um let's go check out how the the, the season finished so mcneil again really good hitter he also had the most hits and then Syndergaard had the best winning percentage. So he definitely had a bounce back year compared to last season. McNeil won the silver slugger and a gold glove for Keon Broxton. And then, oh yeah, let's take a look at the league. We are the second ranked team. We have fourth in contact, second in power, first in pitching, 21st in defense and 13th in speed, 106 and 56. We might be, there were only, th there were 300 win teams, but we were the best one. So that's, that's good to see. Um, Pitching rotation wise, DeGrom was 18 and 8 with a 3 ERA. It says he's going down probably because, you know, the previous two seasons he was really good. And even a 3 ERA is really good. Um, a 3.27 ERA for Syndergaard. He went 16 and 3 on the year. How did he, who won um, Cy Young then? Kershaw, he went 18, he had a 2.46 ERA. So, okay, okay. All right, respectable. So pretty, pretty big pitching duel between Syndergaard and Kershaw. Um, ERA was quite a, like 0.6 higher, but that's that's still good. You know, that's one two. That's solid. Um, Zach Wheeler even, you know, that was even good too. 16 and seven. Um, more innings pitched. ERA went down 0.2. Awesome. Darwinson's up to a 82 overall. He dropped his ERA by over two points. Um, that's solid. Like, that is amazing. That's great to see. He pitched more. He allowed way less runs. I'm glad to see he's developing. And even Steven Matz is up to an 87. And he had a, a great year. You know, a 3-6 ERA as our highest ERA, I will 100% be happy with that. This is That is great to see in a model, modern ball area. Seth Lugo had a little bit of a down year compared to, the, uh, compared to last year, um, which is unfortunate. Um, but... Um, it looks like Yasiel, Yas, Yaisel Sierra um, kind of filled that long relief spot. Um, 477 is is a little high. Um, 321 is pretty good. Cologne um, is 89 overall. I don't know if I'll bring them back because we do have those two closers. I'll have to see what ratings they are. But this is solid. You know, a 3-3 ERA is respectable. Diego Castillo, 1.8 ERA. Amazing. I don't think he pitched that much though. 43 innings is pretty good. Amir Garrett, 3-4 ERA, still pretty solid. You know, that's that's good. You know, relievers who have about a 3-5 or lower, that's, you know, they don't pitch that much. So that's still pretty good. Hayter, 1-5-7. So compared to his five last season, awesome. Jury's Familia, a lot better than last season too. Pitched 22 innings, but still reliable. And then Edwin Diaz, a little bit of a down year. A little bit of, well, yeah, he went up a little bit, which is unfortunate. Um, but he's still, you know, he still closed the door. He's at a 93. Lineup wise, McNeil's an 86. He's looking like he's he's our, just a great contact hitter. He's going to be our leadoff man going forward. Very good average on base percentage slugging. Amazing. Brandon Nimmo's up to an 83. He did better than he did the previous year as well. So that's all I want to see. I want to see stuff going up. Xander Bogarts, even better than he did last year um, in terms of homers ribbies more walks more strikeouts too but you know his average went up a little bit on base percentage stayed the same slugging and ops was basically the same as well conforto's up to an 87 which is awesome didn't hit as well in terms of average or on base percentage or even slugging or ops but still the same homers and ribbies um and a lot more walks too wilson ramos is up to an 88 um that's a good season like 283 unreal pete alonzo's an 82 um his average dipped a little bit um, but his slugging and OPS went up. 
Wilmer Flores hit 218, which is unfortunate. Um, but that's okay. You know, I was kind of using him as just like a, a platoon player. Ahmed Rosario's up to an 82. He definitely improved from the previous season. Um, and then Keon Broxton's an 86. This is what I want to see because center fielders, you either have the elite or you have kind of like the meh. So I want, if you can keep it an 86, we definitely don't have to look for another um, center fielder. And Senzel's up to a 78. He had a pretty decent year in his 60 at bats. Lagaris, 241. That's not bad as our backup outfielder. And then Mezzarocco's not doing too bad either. Quickly, we'll quickly look at our um, prospects. Finnegan, 72. Um, what else we got? What else we got? These two guys. 78 74 not bad they'll probably hit the 80s next season thomas nado will probably be our backup catcher which means we could probably try to see some it's like some prospect for mezzarocco or something angelus is up to a 71 giorme is a 67 uh ims was someone drafted he doesn't look like he's doing too well uh jimenez is a top 50 prospect um he's up to a 70 this guy went down one and then this guy's a 72 oh okay all right and then outside of that um, it's pretty quiet. So let's get into these playoffs. Who are we going to be facing? We are facing the Cardinals. First game is a win. Second game we lost. Third game we won. All right. Elimination game. The very first series. So let's get into it. I'm hoping we get the win. We're the best team. But it always happens whenever we're the like the best team. We always kind of fumble. So looking at the Cardinals. We'll check out their lineup in a second. Um, they have... Uh, Jose Martinez, Colton Wong, Goldschmidt, De Jong, Matt Carpenter, Tyler O'Neill, Bader, Weeders, and Martinez. So pretty, I don't think there's too much that has changed from the team for the Cardinals. And uh, we definitely need to strike first. And there it is, Conforto with the homer. And um, we just got to we gotta score some more runs. McNeil with the double. First and second. Can Conforto do it again? He can't. But you know what? We still have the 1-0 lead. Base is loaded, though. Two runs scored. Hmm. So we definitely need to score quickly. You know, the longer we wait, the worse it's going to get. So I was watching DeGrom's energy. I, I probably should have... Maybe. I don't know. What am I doing? What am I talking about? We do get the tying run, though. Brandon Nimmo doubles home the run. And, ah, man. Can he give me one more out? He does. And that's going to be it for DeGrom. Man. That's unfortunate. We're going to bring in Lugo. See if he can get us an inning or two. There we go. Ahmed Rosario. Walks. Ooh. 86 speed with 43 stealing. I don't know. Fielder's choice. We're going to pinch hit. We're going to bring in Senzel. Pitching change. He walks. McNeil. Double play. Are you serious? Alrighty. Come on. Let's go with, uh, let's go with Castillo gets out of it all right eighth inning can we do something here a double to start it off runner was thrown out at home an error come on pete alonzo fielder's choice all right this comes down to this so we're knocked out ahmed rosario versus andrew miller broxton do we have someone who could hit versus a lefty that's a little bit better wilmer flores wilmer flores grounds out and then pinch hit Lagares singles. Come on, McNeil. No, we're eliminated from the playoffs. It happens every time. Every time we do really well, we always get eliminated first round. Season three, though, it's looking very promising. I'm going to pick the Yankees to win it. And the Indians defeated the Pirates. Okay. But let's get into this post this offseason and let's see if we can win a World Series next season. Alrighty. Everybody was offered arbitration. So we should be good there. Contracts wise, we shouldn't have. Yeah, we don't have anybody that we should um, freak out about losing. Um, so it looks pretty good here. So everyone should get a contract. Alrighty, so this Adrian Hernandez guy left us in the offseason. I don't know why. I feel a little little hurt by that. So Devin Mezzarocco, um, Freddy Valdez, who's 72 overall, but B potential. This guy's uh, this guy's C potential. The one we're trying to get back is B potential. Um, I'm probably going to bring him up and I'm going to show you guys what our team currently looks like. We're going to send this guy back down to AAA. Um, and then 
this is what our team looks like now it looks really good alonzo's an 82 uh, wilson ramos is back um, Ahmed Rosario is an 80. Broxton's an 83. Ligaris is not going to be playing left field. Um, sorry, bud. <laughs> um, let's make sure. Uh, Nimmo's in left. McNeil, like, the team looks really good. Um, you know, and players should continue to grow as, as things go on. Ligaris, uh, Wilmer Flores are there. Nick Senzel. And then Adrian Hernandez. These two, I'm a little worried that they might start decreasing in uh, overall a little bit. And then the pitching, pitching is where it's like, whoo. It's looking pretty. Um, look at this. Oh man, it's looking nice. Um, yeah, it looks really good. Um, we could probably do with one bullpen arm. And I think I already know who I want to bring up. Well, Amir Garrett should already be up. But these, one of these two guys might feature this season as well. Um, probably this guy. Which probably means we can <laughs> um, send one of these guys down. Uh, we'll let him go down. And we'll just bring up the extra the extra arm. I feel like it's a little bit better to do that anyways. Boom. And he's an 80. Oh man. Ooh. This might this might be good. You know? <laughs> so the team's looking strong. Obviously, we took a bat away, which Yeah, probably shouldn't have done that. But I feel like if we have a strong pitching, you know, the, the lineup's good enough as it is, we should be fine. So that's the team. I'm not gonna make any changes. I feel comfortable with it already. Um it just it looks too good to like try to change anything it just looks way too good so let's see how season three plays out um and hopefully things go well Alrighty, we won the division 97 and 65 so not as good as last year but again we'll be taking on the wild card team so let's let's take a look let's see what happened mcneil with doubles and then degrom was so degrom hater and Syndergaard look like they pitched pretty well so awards wise uh, Syndergaard had a gold glove and the Cy Young went to DeGrom. So, yes, that's what I want to see. Let's take a look at the standings. We are the first ranked team in Major League Baseball. Fourth contact, second power, first pitching. Um, 19th in defense and 22nd speed. But you guys can see it was really close in the East. That's that's nuts. Um, that two other East teams got the, the wild card. Um, the Red Sox and the Indians were the only 100 win teams this season. So looking at the team... Um, pff, the pitching is unreal. Syndergaard, 265 ERA. So, like, he even got better. That is nuts. 13 and 5, 224 innings. On that's just unreal stuff. DeGrom, 19 and 6, with a 261 ERA. Like, he even got better. So, between these two, how do you get a, like, how do you lose? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just unreal. Um, Zach Wheeler, ERA wise. Um, a little bit of a down year compared to his previous two seasons, even three seasons. Um, so he kind of, in my eyes, kind of falls down a little bit, but still very consistent. Darwinzen's going back up, which is awesome to see. Um, even better ERA wise. He pitched about similar innings, 10 innings different, but very consistent. Zach Matz, um, ERA went up a little bit. You know, his overall isn't 87 like it finished last season. So it'd probably be like this. This is where I would trust everybody to be at. Um, Yaisel Sierra, C potential went down. He had a rough season this year. Yeah, that's a rough one. Um, that's pretty rough. Seth Lugo, though, it looks like they swapped. Yaisel was good last year. Lugo had a little bit of a rough patch. And then it looks like they just they flip-flopped. Um, Diego Castilla's 87. He's, he's like a must-pick up for... Um, uh, a uh, bullpen, duh. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously his his ERA doubled, but you know you're, when you see those stats, that's just those are just unreal stats. Cologne, I was hesitant on bringing him back this season, but it you know it looks like it was worth it. Amir Garrett, a little bit of a rough patch, you know his ERA doubled. Um, he's up to a 79, so probably he'll be 80, mid 80s by the time he hits like 29, 30. Um, Brian Ramirez had a you know high ERA, but he's continuing to develop. And really, the thing to worry about is his walks. Outside of that, you know his control too. But once those two stats go up, he's going to be a scary pitcher. Edwin Diaz looked like he got kicked out of the closer spot, which is probably hurting his morale a little bit. Um, but ERA wise, it definitely improved. Um, so that's good. Jerry's Familia as well. His ERA went up a little bit. He he didn't pitch as much, which little little. 
a little bit disappointing, but ERA wise, Je Josh Hader was amazing. 54 saves. That's awesome. So bullpen and pitching staff really carry the team for sure. Um, looking at the team, Jeff McNeil's looking like a second baseman that's not going anywhere. Consistently hitting over 300. That's just awesome to see. Brandon Nimmo, yeah, his ERA, uh, ERA, his average went down, but still on base percentage was amazing along with slugging and OPS. Um, he's looking like a starting left fielder for the future. Bogarts, same thing, like almost 300. Like he's, he was a great pickup. You know, I know we have a Med Rosario and we also traded for Nick Senzel, but to help us win now, it was just perfect. Um, Conforto, yeah, he's going down a little bit, but overall, you know, very good run production. And, you know, these two numbers are still pretty close together. So he did pretty solid. Wilson Ramos is getting better as he gets older. He's like a, he's like a fine wine. You know, Pete Alonso's hitting 250. His potential's going up. His overall's going up. So, yeah, he's, he's going to be a star first baseman for us. Ahmed Rosario's looking like he's going to be our third baseman shortstop. Um, even though his average, his average, I wanted to obviously improve, but he's looking pretty decent. Keon Broxton's looking like he's going to settle around the 85 mark, which I was expecting him to be there and it worked out like he's, he's doing decently. Um, Ligaris, eh, Wilmer Flores, eh, and Nick Senzel is just, that's not good enough. Obviously his overall is still getting better. Um, and he needs some more at bats, but I wish it was, I wish his, his production was a little bit better um looking at our team you know a lot of these pitchers are starting to get up in overalls even though they're not high potential which is which is good to see um gilliam's there claudio molina is here uh no one else really um our two pitching prospect these these two closers are amazing like looking really good um nido was a player I wanted to bring up and I forgot to after I traded Mezzarocco, but he's up to a 74, so he'll 100% be a feature um, for like future seasons. Um, Jimenez is a 74, so like second and short are looking solid. This Hernandez guy, 76, so he would definitely be our platoon outfielder for the future. So the team's looking good. Um, could use a little bit of injection in youth in terms of prospect, but overall, overall, looks pretty solid we're taking on the phillies in this series um you guys can see the playoff bracket there um they beat the braves okay all right so first game we won second game we lost third game we got smacked so if we lose this game we are eliminated so not good not good at all which is which is unreal because again we are a crazy good team and uh, it's just not going well. So looking at the team, I'm going to leave it like that and let's see how we start off this game. So they have Segura, Herrera, Harper, Hoskins, Williams, Frank. So besides LeMayhew, it's looking like the exact same team. Um, they're just, I guess, really good. So far, pretty quiet game. Um, that's not what I wanted to see got out of it all right somebody we we need to get a hit ourselves come on guys conforto ramos there we go alonzo ahmed rosario come on guys we need something we can't we can't let this happen man four hits between the two teams through six innings oh, pff, what <laughs> all right Alonzo, Rosario, Broxton, Broxton, okay, steal second, so basically, a hit, oh man, I feel like I have to, right, Wheeler's pitching so well, but we got a guy in scoring position, I really hope this doesn't backfire. So what do we got? Righty, righty, lefty. So let's bring in Cologne. Okay, that's good. Let's see. McNeil strikes out. Nimmo out. Bogart walks. Conforto brings in the run. Yes. There we go. Um, in the ninth, we're going to bring in our closer. Senor Hater. An error. A single, really? A fly out 
and a fly out. We defeat the Phillies. Whew. That was a, that was a little, uh, little intense there. I didn't like that. Um, we're going to go into the elimination game here. This time we are home. Um, obviously, we're going to have... Ooh, they both kind of had a little rough outing. We're, this starting lineup is going to be the same. And uh, the Grom, I need, I need your, uh, your amazing prowess here. All right, that's good. So two hits between the teams. It's a little quiet. Somebody, and by somebody I mean us. This inning, this is our inning. There it is, Conforto two run shot. That's what I'm talking about, guys. That's what we needed. A double, a walk. Can we bunt him over? We do. One out. One one out. Are you serious? One out, second and third, and we don't take advantage of it. Oh, that's unfortunate. Just like clockwork. So we only, only five hits between the two teams. That's nuts. And out and out and out. There we go, DeGrom. You know what? He's pitching well. I'm going to keep him going. A triple. Bring him home. Somebody. Conforto again in the clutch. Fielder's choice gets us out of it. Or gets them out of it. Ooh, bases loaded. Yo, 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 yo. Hold on. Strikeout. One run scores. One more out. That's all we need. Hater, please. Hater, please. No! Uh... You serious hater I needed one out from you that's it that's all we needed that's all we needed all we needed guy on second there it is Nick Senzel pinch hit walk off we're taking on the Dodgers oh man that was that was too much that, that can't happen um I think DeGrom's gonna be tired so what I'll do is I'll just flip flop him it should give him an extra day Let's see. Yeah, it should. Uh, maybe. Yeah, we'll just do. We'll try it like that. We won. We won. We won. We lost. All right. So three, two. We still have the lead. Elimination game to take on Boston in the World Series. It's looking like Kershaw, Degrom. Woo! This is a good matchup. Lineup looks good. All right, so D. Gordon, Chris Taylor, Corey Seager, Bellinger, Peterson, Muncie, Drury, and Barnes. Couple changes. Double play. Solo shot. Really? Not the best of starts. <sighs> Come on, guys. We we need we need some runs. We need to we need to get back into this game. It's a two-run game. Come on. All right. This is our inning. This is the one. We got a walk. There we go. A single. A fly out. Sack fly ties up the... Not... No, it doesn't. It gets us within one, which is okay. I'm watching... Dude, what is going on? All right, that was his last inning. There we go. McNeil gets us back within one. Okay. Unfortunate. All right, it's unfortunate, but... Seth Lugo, single, really. Sack bunt. Sack bunt. Can we get us out of this? We do. All right, perfect. Alonzo walks. Ahmed Rosario flies out. Broxton walks. First and second. We're going to pinch hit. We can't mess around here. Um, Let's go Flores. Strikes out. McNeil, fielder's choice. Ugh. So we're facing a string of lefties. Come on, Garrett. Really, hater. You're going to do that to me? <sighs> you serious? God. All right. Base hit, Alonzo. That's what we need. Yes. Even better. Three run bomb ties up the game. Top nine. Come on. Single. 
keep us alive. One scores. Bogarts, please. <sighs> Red Sox defeat the Dodgers 4-1. to one. Oh, man. That one hurts. That one hurts a little bit. But overall, not, not too bad. This team is scary. You know, like Syndergaard, it's 28. DeGrom, it's 32. So these two are good for a few more years. Um, Syndergaard, more than a few years. You're looking at like five, six. DeGrom is looking at like two. Darwin's in. You got him for the future. He'll definitely hit mid to high 80s. Wheeler just hit 30. You got another two, three years out of him before he decreases. Mats, same thing. So this rotation, locked up. You're good. This right here, um, you know, 31. Castillo's good. Colomb's, what, 32? Yeah. Amir Garrett just hit 28. So you got some young guys here. Yasiel, Yaisel, probably a player that you get rid of. But you guys, but we have that prospect who's, what, 78, 79? So he could even come in um, and we could just move like Amir Garrett because he's got okay stamina. We could do this, move the prospect into this spot. You know, we got Ramirez, we got Edwin, Jury's uh, hater, I believe, hits arbitration this year, so got him locked up. Familia, yes and no, I'm not too sure about him. Edwin, same deal. If he pitches well, he does well. If not, you know, we can always trade him, Have he's got value. McNeil's not going anywhere. Nimmo's not going anywhere. Bogarts is good. Uh, we have him for another, what, three years, four years. Conforto's good. Um, he hits free agency, but definitely be able to afford him ramos is locked up pete alonzo is going to hit arbitration not for a while because we signed him to a five-year deal ahmed rosario is hitting arbitration um keon broxton um if we could find a better center fielder probably sign it but otherwise keeping him around for like a five or six million deal is not bad lagaris i'd probably let walk flores i'd probably let walk as well um and then senzo obviously is going to be that platoon infielder for the future um, you got decent prospects. Um, you got Molina. You got Lee. Um, Nido is coming up. Um, um, Jimenez is coming up. Uh, Hernandez. So it's looking good for a few positions. You just got to plug some pieces in here and there. And this Mets team's looking nice. Um, this pitching might be the best pitching hands down that we have. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's Mets rebuild. I can't believe we lost that game. And I, it was probably because we left Familia in for just a little bit too long. Um, I was trying to keep attention to it, but it just got out of hand. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like button down below and uh, in the comment section, let me know which, ti uh, which time, which team to rebuild next. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.